Do you have a paranormal encounter you'd like to share with us? Send us an email with your story for a chance of it being featured on Weird World. In this collection, we explore seven more true chilling tales from the 80s to the 2000s, which link ordinary lives with the eerie and often dire consequences of dabbling with a Ouija board. Encounter prophetic dreams, haunting entities, terrifying visitations and tragic fates as we once more traverse the unsettling realm of the supernatural. A disturbing dream come true. During her adolescent years in the early 2000s, Claire experienced a sequence of dreams where she found herself and her closest friend Ginny interacting with the spirit called Ethan through a Ouija board. These dreams, which were impressively lucid and captivating, led Claire to purchase a real Ouija board to experiment. She welcomed Ginny and another friend to partake in the session, but kept her recurring dream a secret. To prevent her subconscious manipulating the planchette towards any of her preconceived thoughts, Claire took on the role of a note-taker, planning to document the messages her friends received from the board. Soon enough, the trio felt they had made contact with the spirit. When they asked if the spirit was present, they got a response, yes. And after asking for the name... The board spelled Ethan. Overwhelmed and petrified, Claire insisted on terminating the session. The girls moved the plancher to goodbye, packed the board and stopped the session. Claire then shared her dream with her friends. And they all agreed to seek guidance from a priest the next day. The following afternoon, they indeed sought advice from a local priest. They received an immediate blessing in his office and he also proceeded to bless Claire's house. Afterward, Claire stowed away the Ouija board in a locked cupboard in the basement, vowing never to use or even think about it again. A year and a half later, as Claire and Ginny were conversing online on Facebook, an image of the Ouija board suddenly popped up on Claire's laptop screen. Alarmed, she threw the laptop, causing it to shatter. When her parents came rushing into her room, she explained everything. The dreams, the interaction with the Ethan spirit, as well as a laptop incident that had just occurred. Fortunately, her parents trusted her story and arranged counselling for both her and Ginny. They also organised for the Ouija board in the basin to be professionally taken care of. In time, Claire and her family relocated to a new home, maintaining hope that no unwanted presence had moved along with them. Zozo and the Grieving Sister Holly, along with her two sisters, had always held a fascination for tales of the spiritual realm and paranormal phenomena. As high school students, the trio purchased a Ouija board and began to use it frequently. The girls were overjoyed when their early attempt to connect with spirits proved successful. As Holly recounts, they conversed with numerous spirits who revealed details about their previous lives, their families and other matters. However, after several weeks, the amicable spirits ceased to appear and a much more ominous entity took their place. This entity identified itself as Zozo, claiming to be a devil. Moreover, it continually warned the girls that it would get them. The girls, disturbed yet intrigued, decided to ask the local priest about the name Zozo. The priest responded vehemently, urging them to cease their use of the Ouija board immediately. He insisted that it was not a plaything and could lead to grave consequences. The following Sunday, his sermon was devoted to the topic of Ouija boards and occultism. The girls took his warning to heart and discontinued their use of the board. About a year later, one of Holly's friends, Anna, suffered the tragic loss of her sister in a van accident. Knowing about Holly's experience with the Ouija board, she implored Holly to attempt to connect with her sister through it. Initially, Holly was hesitant due to the harrowing memory of Zozo. However, she eventually conceded wanting to assist her distraught friend. As soon as they started using the board, they made contact with a spirit claimed to be Anna's sister. Overwhelmed by emotions, Anna expressed her unwillingness to live without her sister. She cried, stating that her love for her sister was so strong that she only wished to be with her no matter where she might be. Fortnight later, Anna lost her life in yet another van accident, eerily similar to that of her sisters. This event led Holly to discard her Ouija board, vowing never to use one again. Who will die first? 
ex-police officer Daryl Smith will never forget his sole encounter with the Ouija board. The incident unfolded during the winter of 1987 in a small Iowan town. One evening, he was visiting his friend Mark's apartment when three girls from the neighbourhood arrived, carrying a Ouija board. The girls began to reenact scenes from a horror film involving the Ouija board. However, Daryl, having watched the same movie, called out their play acting. Following a round of laughter, the girls encouraged Daryl and Ma to give the Ouija board a try. Shrugging at each other with a why-not demeanour, the two men approached the board and placed their hands on the planchette. The aim was to prove to the girls that the board was merely a game and had no supernatural powers. Initially, the board did not respond to their questions, but when they asked who in this building will die first, they were taken aback as the planchette spelled out, Larry. Daryl was stunned. Larry was his closest friend and Daryl was certain that neither he nor Mark had manipulated the pointer. The following summer, Larry met an untimely death in a single vehicle accident. The Boyfriend Karen had always wondered why her great-aunt Mary remained unmarried. Her curiosity led her to inquire about it from a family member. The explanation she received was startling. As a teenager of 16, Mary had turned to a Ouija board to seek insight about a serious relationship with her boyfriend, questioning whether they would eventually marry. The board replied negatively. When she further inquired if they were destined to part ways, the board again responded with a no. Finally, Mary asked if either of them was fated to die, to which the board ominously replied yes. However, when she saw clarity on who was going to die, the board abruptly ended the session with a goodbye. A week following this eerie incident, tragedy struck when Mary's boyfriend was fatally injured in an accident involving the wood chipper at his workplace. The Terrifying Messenger As a teenager, Carl decided to host a gathering at his home where he and his friends experimented with his Ouija board. They quickly made contact with a presence that identified itself as a demon. Despite numerous questions from the boys, the entity only responded to Carl, foretelling a visit to him shortly after midnight. The boys, utterly terrified, concluded the session and stored the board away. Just after midnight, as forewarned, the demon stole Carl from his sleep. The entity perched itself at the foot of his bed, donning a sinister grin. Carl later described the being as small, malevolent and grotesque. The creature delivered a chilling prophecy about Carl's first child dying before mysteriously disappearing. The following morning, Carl disposed of the Ouija board. However, a few days later, an unfamiliar young boy showed up at his house holding the discarded Ouija board. The boy handed it back to Carl, stating, This is yours, before promptly leaving. Now profoundly terrified, Carl attempted to incinerate the board, but despite his best efforts, the board wouldn't catch fire. Eventually, he dug a deep hole, placed the board within, covered it with a Bible, and buried it. This seemed to work, as Carl has not encountered the board since. Regrettably, the entity's ominous prediction manifested. Many years later, after Carl married, his wife suffered a miscarriage during their first pregnancy at three months. Grandpa. Matt and his brother quickly connected with the spirit through the Ouija board they were experimenting with one night in mid-2007. The entity, identifying itself as Seth, decided to substantiate its authenticity in a startling, chilling manner. It made a morbid prediction that the grandfather of Matt's best friend would pass away within a week. Then, out of nowhere, the chandelier hanging over the table started shaking violently. Despite the room's thermostat indicating a comfortable temperature of 70 degrees Fahrenheit, it felt like a deep freeze. Accompanying this was a nauseating odour akin to decomposing flesh, which filled the room, provoking bouts of coughing and retching from the brothers. As abruptly as it had begun, the chandelier's trembling ceased. The boy sprinted to an open window in an attempt to eliminate the putrid smell. The unsettling experience concluded with the brothers making a pact to erase the night's events from memory and to permanently abandon their use for the Ouija board. However, the vow to forget was made more challenging when one week later, the grandfather of Matt's friend 
passed away, as the spirit had predicted. The car crash. At the age of 14, inseparable friends Tammy and Jane and Sarah engaged in a ritual of conducting Ouija board seances every Friday night. During one particular session, the board was exceptionally responsive, revealing a prediction about Jane's brother being involved in a car accident. Terrified by this prophecy, the girls anxiously called local hospitals, seeking news about any recent accidents. Jane's mother, disturbed by the frenzy, descended from her bedroom and sternly warned the girls to cease their seances. She threatened to prohibit their meetups if they continued with the sessions. Despite their fear, they attempted to caution Jane's brother, but their warning was dismissed with laughter. However, three weeks following their ominous seance, the predicted accident took place. Jane's brother was in a friend's car that collided with a telephone pole, catapulting him eight feet into the air. He sustained severe injuries from the crash, but his fate could have been even more catastrophic had he not switched seats moments before the accident. 